to all those above me that watch over me, to all of you, my fave parapeeps on this side of the veil, welcome. I'm Sean Whittington. I'm your host. I'm a seminarian in the United States Old Catholic Church. This is the Paranormal Ministry, and I'm coming to you live from my haunted home, my very haunted home. Been quiet today, and I think it's because they don't want to mess around with my guests who are from the most haunted land down under, Haunt Australia. You're going to love them, and I know that's why you all tuned in. They're in the green room. I'll bring them right out. Let's first check on the prayer urn. Barbara B. from Nebraska. Hi, Barbara. I'm non-denomination. I do believe in God and Jesus and would like a closer relationship with God in 2023. Advice. Well, Barbara, I am very pleasantly pleased to inform you that (laughs) you're not non-denomination. If you believe in God and Jesus, then you're Christian. Okay, so that's the good news. Um, More good news is that uh, I'm a big believer You know, I was just talking to my guest about this in the green room before the show. I'm a big believer in the power of prayer. Trust me, there is power in prayer. The more you pray, the closer you get to God and the closer you bring God to you. So having said that, if you don't know any prayers, just make the sign of the cross and talk to God as though he's standing right there in front of you. And trust me, he is. And uh, talk to him in your own words. But I would highly recommend that you uh, learn some prayers if you don't already know some. And just right off the top of my head, uh, five that I say every morning, every night would be the Our Father, the Hail Mary, the Glory Be, the Phantoma prayer, and the St. Michael prayer, short version in English. Um, And a matter of fact, you know what you should get if you don't know any prayers? And and you know, Barbara, I talk to people every day that don't know any prayers. They want to pray. They don't know how to pray or they don't even know any prayers. Get yourself a nice little Catholic book of prayers. They're very inexpensive and you'll find all of those prayers in there. But start praying more. And you didn't ask for this, but I'm going to offer up a prayer for you, Barbara, and for everyone else that's watching the show that may be feeling exactly like you feel, okay? I offer this prayer up for Barbara and all within the sound of my voice that are in need of these words. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, I do not know what to ask you. You alone know my real needs, and you love me more than I even know how to love. Enable me to discern my true needs, which are hidden from me. I ask for neither a cross nor a consolation, but simply wait in patience for you. My heart is open to you. For your great mercy's sake, come to me and help me. Put your mark on me and heal me. Cast me down and raise me up. I silently adore your holy will and your inscrutable ways. I offer myself in sacrifice to you and put all my trust in you. I desire only to do your will. Teach me how to pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Barbara, continue to reach out to me from time to time. And let me know how, the, how your year is going and how your uh, relationship was, with God is developing. And I will continue to pray for you. All right, Paranormal Ministry Mailbag. Richard K. from Mississippi. Mississippi. (laughs) Have I ever gotten a a request from Mississippi before? I don't remember. Well, this is cool. I may be gifted. Not sure. I see spirit all the time. How can I control that? And how can I keep the bad spirits away? Wow. That is a great question, Richard. Um, This is the best advice I can give you. It's hard if you are truly gifted. It's hard to just shut that off. So I would recommend 
that you reach out to somebody far more gifted than me and ask for their advice on how to learn how to sharpen and harness your gift because with that will come the the ability to better shut it off and shut it down when you don't want that open sign open for business sign to the spirit world blinking all the time uh, a good person to um, reach out to try the the medium susan ahern who's on my show the last monday of every month she's my co-host for happy medium mondays and she would be i know her she would be more than willing to help you and if she can't direct you to somebody who can help you with that and let me say one more thing to you. Obviously, you are able to discern the difference between the good spirits and the bad spirits, or you wouldn't have mentioned um, how to keep the bad spirits away. So I don't know what religious belief system you have in place or not. Regardless, try this the next time they come around. You make the sign of the cross, and you say this to the bad spirit. I rebuke your presence. And I command you, command you in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to go directly to the foot of the cross for Jesus to deal with you. I wish you the best of luck. I will pray for you, Richard, and keep me, in, keep me posted. And let me know if you reach out to Susan and what she said, or if you have another um, truly gifted psychic medium that you know of that you can reach out to for help. That's who you need to speak to. Someone far more gifted psychically than I am. Okay. Anything you want to know about my wife and I and our ministry work, go to our website, www.ghost-b-gone.biz. If you go there to visit, keep in mind my wife and I don't charge for our ministry work, helping people with their paranormal issues. So I know times are tough. Believe me, I do. But if you notice the donate button and you're able to do so, click on it and send my ministry in a small donation. I promise you it'll be appreciated from the bottom of our hearts. And trust me, we'll put it to good use. I'm also a certified spiritual advisor. So if you're having some issues of a spiritual nature not necessarily attached to the paranormal and you'd like to make an appointment to speak with me about those issues, there's a place on the website to do that. But don't leave the website without navigating over to the page called the WSE course slash book. On that page, you'll see the ghost store. Lots of cool things to buy on there if you go for that sort of stuff. And everything you buy, part of the proceeds go to, to many things that I donate to. But scroll down a little bit on that page. You'll run into my new haunted autobiography, God, Ghosts, and the Paranormal Ministry. And I quote, scariest book I ever published. That was Annette Munich, owner of Stellium Books, my publisher. But don't let that scare you off of purchasing a copy. If you haven't done your good deed for the day yet, part of the proceeds of every copy of my book that is sold goes to support stjude.org, St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, Nevada, and the ASPCA. So how cool is that? You get to help some of the neediest children on the planet and the animals, too. There is a place where you can buy the book on the website. If it comes from the website, it leaves my office. So I sign it, and I enclose it in a beautiful house blessing kit. Or you can get it a little less expensive on Amazon. One more thing I want to throw out real quick. If you get the book and you have had this happen to you, I want to hear from you. I don't know how well you guys can see this. That bottom picture, that is an entity that I captured on film at an abandoned location out in the middle of the Mojave Desert. Since I put that picture in this book and published the book, it hasn't happened so much off of Amazon, but some of the people that have purchased the book for me that have left my office have reported seeing that apparition in their home after receiving the book. And I've been told some some pretty interesting stories about that. And that blows my mind. If you are one of those people out there that have purchased this book and you have had paranormal issues happen after the book has arrived in your home, I want to hear your story. Your story may end up in, you never know, where I may be able to take your story to. Um, so I'd like to hear from you, okay? 
and it's a great time to buy the first book. There are stories in there that I left open-ended because uh, I wasn't able to bring closure to them yet, and they were ongoing. And God, Ghosts, and the Paranormal Ministry 2, Chronicles of an American Exorcist, comes out very soon. And I bring closure to a lot of those cases in that second book. So it's a great time to get the first one, get all caught up before you uh, rush right out and get the second book. Scroll a little bit further down on that page, you'll see the Worldwide Society of Exorcists, which I'm a founding member. I offer a 12-week online college-level course, Introduction to Spiritual Warfare, through the WSE. And this is the course for all you true warriors for Christ out there that feel a calling and a longing to want to have more knowledge when it comes to drawing your line in the sand, making a stand, circling the wagons, and putting up a good fight against, God forbid, true evil if it ever comes calling. This is the course for you. No, I'm not going to teach you how to be an exorcist. That's a completely different type of calling. But this course is unlike any other course like it. And it's spiritual warfare through my eyes and my experiences over the years. Um, you can enroll in the course there on the website. If you'd like more information about it before making that type of commitment, there is a Worldwide Society of Exorcists Facebook page. And you can read more about the course or just reach out to me and I can talk to you, see if it's uh, the course is right for you. Most importantly, please keep all of my former, current and future students in your prayers. And all my students that graduate get a stunning diploma certificate of completion suited for framing, along with some other very special blessed gifts that you can only get from yours truly. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And all of you that want to uh, enroll in it this year, best of luck. And um, and thank you for that. And thank you for everyone that signed up for the fall class. Okay, the reason why you all tuned in. I haven't been down to the most haunted land down under, Australia, uh, in a long time. These two... I love these two. They're so cool. They're so so such genuine souls, very passionate about the paranormal. And um, you guys are going to love them. Without further ado, please welcome to the show, Jason and Julia King. G'day. <laughs> Let me just throw this out there now. It's been a while since I've tried to have a live stream from Australia. So you never know. It's it's a it's a roll of the dice how the signal's going to go. So far, it seems to be you guys both look. Uh, Julia, you look very pretty. Jason, you Thank look you. like somebody I wouldn't want to mess with out on the outback. So um, <laughs> I'm a gentle boy. <laughs> so welcome to the show. Um, if even if you guys hadn't had me on your show, Jason Ghost Hunter on YouTube, I would have eventually got around to you and, ha and had you on the show. So my only rule is I want you two to have fun, so you'll want to come back. And uh, I was thinking about you guys. I think it was probably before I went to bed on Friday, I thought about you guys. Because here on the TV, you guys were already celebrating New Year's there in Sydney, 19 hours before me. So so I, if I'm correct, if my calculation is correct, it's lunchtime there tomorrow. Tuesday. Yes. yes. <laughs> We're from incredible. the future. Yeah, we're in the future. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know what I'm going to ask you guys. So uh, we'll get to the paranormal stuff, but I have to ask you this. How is it? Are you both born and raised in Australia? Yes. yes. I was born in Sydney. I still live in Sydney. Uh, Jason was born in South Australia, but um, over when he was a child, he, he moved to New South Wales and still here. So. How does it feel to live in a land where everything can kill you? <laughs> um, you kind of get used to it. You get used to it. I mean, I don't think about other than, of course, when you're bushwalking and things, you got to think of snakes this time of the year. Um, but... Yeah, other than that, we don't think about it. I mean, 
the beaches, you've got risks everywhere in every country. Um, we don't live in North Queensland or the north of Australia, so we don't have to worry about crocodiles where we are. Um, and spiders, well, I'm not a fan of them. Um, get your house sprayed like everybody else and you'll be fine. They'll stay outside. <laughs> and if, if, if they do come inside, she come and gets me and I've got to go and catch it and get it outside. <laughs> well, I you know, don't think I... about it too much. I know I told you guys this story about uh, the last, I believe it was the last guest I had on the show from Australia. And right in the middle of the interview, it sounded like somebody was kicking in her back door and she didn't seem to be alarmed by it at all. And the interview went on and this banging and banging. Finally, I interrupted her and said, listen, I hate to ask, but is somebody locked out? Do you need to let somebody in the dog or your one of your kids or your husband or somebody? She goes, I'll show you who's doing the banging. She grabbed the camera and panned it over to her back door. And there was a family of kangaroo out there on her back porch. She said, yeah, my husband made the mistake one time of putting food out for them. And ever since that day, and it's been months now, every morning at the same time, this family of Rue come by and they bang on the back door for breakfast. I, I was just like, I don't like mice. So here I am, I'm staring at these uh, essentially mice that are bigger than me on steroids. <laughs> Uh, she says, yeah, they'll kill my, I have to, every morning at this time, I got to bring my dogs in or they'll kill my dogs. That's frightening. Have you had any run-ins like that with any, I'll tell you what scare, really scares me about Australia is, and I don't know the name of this bird. It's uh, like, it looks like an ostrich, but far more prehistoric and it's deadly. And it, they say oh, that it, 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 it yeah, the cassowary. Oh my gosh. Now. Yeah. Those are very scary. Um, like I said, everything out there can kill you. Have you guys had any run-ins like that at all that you can share? Not with a cassowary. Not with a cassowary. At work where I work, I get the kangaroos, um, wild deers, snakes, what? spiders. But this is a normal day for me when I'm driving around. I go, oh, there's a kangaroo. Or I might be out of the bus because I'm a bus driver too. I'll get out of the bus and I'll go and do something. Next minute I've got a six-foot kangaroo staring at me, big muscly thing, and I go, oh, I'll tell you, and just keep walking. <laughs> oh, my gosh. In incredible. Well, your your country is on the top of the to-do list to be one of the places before my, this journey of mine is over and I go on to heaven, um, one of the places I need to visit. Um so and so, if I am able to get out there, I know the wife and I are planning a uh, trip to Ireland, Scotland, and England for our 25th wedding anniversary in five years. But if we ever make it out to Australia, you can plan on me banging on your door. Anytime. Anytime, you'd be more than welcome. We'll show you around, and um, you wouldn't have to worry about safety. Honestly, kangaroos are more of a nuisance when you're driving at night because they can jump out from anywhere, and you can accidentally hit them with your car and it's more of a you don't want to damage your car because they can make a bit of damage um but other than that i mean they're in the bush if they see you they'll pretty much hop away unless you go to the zoos yeah so. and we'll if you do come to australia we will take it to a zoo so you go up and pat them you know <laughs> get you know pat them all over play with the emus you know what i mean like like you get to you know have that interactive with them so you'd be able to feed them and do everything i know my dog doesn't have a clue what i'm saying to her but she now i have all these cats that live outside my yard my wife feeds them gives them fresh water and we have carriers put around the yard for them to have a place to sleep in but my dog hates it so she sits right by the doggy door because she can see out it and waiting for one of them to get close enough that she can jump out and pounce on. And I joke with her and I always say, you're, you're lucky uh, they're not kangaroo or you would, you know, it wouldn't end well for you. Um, <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, let's talk some paranormal. Yep. Jason Ghost Hunter Show. I know for a fact you have a Facebook page, Jason Ghost Hunter. You also have a YouTube channel, Jason Ghost Hunter. I've been on the show. I've seen the show. You just recently had an episode the other day. Tell everybody about how that show came to be, 
where they can catch it and when they can catch it. Well, we try and do a video once a week um, for the ghost hunt inside, but try to see what we can capture. Our last video, we went to a place where we've had some weird experience happening. And as we're filming, literally halfway at the end, you'll see something on the bottom of the screen comes out. And as it's coming out, it's moving and it shoots back. And I slow it down for people to see it. Um, and just recently, one of our friends contacted us and told us a story about the place. Um, so it might make a lot of sense of the situation, what was down there. But we do live shows, talking to people like yourself and other people and do live chats. So, you know, like we like to help and when we can. Absolutely. I um, I want to ask you guys something else, and, and, and maybe I'm totally off base here. Like if you talk to people from, from the UK, like uh, English people that are into ghost hunting, they'll tell you that it's true that English ghosts are very, very English in terms of you do hear the rattling of the chains and the moaning and you see a lot of headless ghosts. Then you go up to Scotland and you talk to some Scottish ghost hunters and they'll tell you that um, a lot of tortured souls, a lot of a lot of poltergeist activity where the apparitions are just you can't make sense of them like like the one castle that's famous for the masturbating pink gorilla that runs Ooh. around the castle you know go figure um a lot of dungeons you find a lot of troubled soul spirits down in the dungeons of course in ireland you know i talk to ghost hunters out there that say it's a just very mystical type haunt a lot of elemental encounters and elemental hauntings now in australia clearly this is my impression clearly there are a lot i mean a lot of very violent haunts out there you've got like out here i've been blessed to be invited out to a couple of reservations and help their holy people with some cases that that they didn't seem to be able to 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 take care of themselves and I, I it was a big honor i don't know if you guys have ever had the opportunity to work with any of the the um mobs out there the the aboriginal aboriginal people um but there's a lot of violent haunts out there where these are just disembodied human spirits that lash out at people as if they were malevolent or even um poltergeist in nature what what's your guys take on why so many violent haunts reported from australia i think it's to do with our history because when you look at when australia started it was a pretty traumatic time i mean the indigenous people a lot of them you know they, they can tell you stories of carnage and when the white people came and they fought over the land and then, of course, you had the convicts that were brought over. I mean, a lot of them were sentenced to death over in England and they were given a reprieve, which was sent to a, a country where it hadn't been developed, so there was no running water, there was no anything, just the harsh land. And um, basically, you know, the fittest survived out there because it was a kill or keep, be kill situation. If the hard labour didn't kill you, well, another prisoner nastier than you might. You know what I mean? And from what I hear in the history, what I read in it, um, you know, the the guards and the, and, the, and the English police officers, if you like, the soldiers, they were pretty brutal as well to the convicts. So I guess there's a lot of... Um, dissatisfied souls that roam the earth that didn't feel like they they got their closure or their just desserts. You know, they felt that things were pretty unfair for them, which has carried that grief over into the afterlife. So um, you have a lot of lost souls, I, I, I think. that That's just my opinion. You know, when you go to a lot of historic places, um, you're likely to tap into... A, con a convict um, from the past. And you can tell when, like, a lot of people don't believe in spirit boxes and things, but when we use them, you can hear different accents come through. You can hear Irish accents. 
you can hear them talk in a lingo that would be more suited to their time. And um, I found it very interesting, the things that came through. And a lot of them still feel that they're working or they, they don't realise that they've actually passed on. You know, they still feel like they're trapped. I, in, in my humble opinion, of course, if somebody, re I do a lot of residential cases. So if somebody reaches out to me and talks to me about uh, having um, something in their home, regardless of what it is, I try to help. I don't do much ghost. There was a time where I did a lot of ghost hunting, but not so much anymore. But I always, even then, I tried to avoid like the insane asylums and the prisons and places like that. Because I have found that like I'll go into a home and if it's Aunt B or Uncle Tom or a previous resident of the home kind of lingering around because they had some unfinished business and they had so much of a hold on life when they pass that they're not ready to cross yet. They know that the time that they will eventually have to cross, they see the light, some of their loved ones have come and, and tried to wave them over, but they still try to avoid it because they feel there's some unfinished business. But these male really malevolent behaving um, disembodied human spirits, th their unfinished business, mm. they, they won't leave until their unfinished business is taken care of. And of course, you can't go back to when the, the deed was done, when they were either sentenced to, uh, do they have, did they at one time have executions out there? They yes, did. They used you know, to they, have... you go back to that and they, they're, they're upset about that. They're upset mm. about being imprisoned. They're upset about, you know, uh, anything else that may have happened to them that was violent, that re resulted in their death. Um, have you guys ran into much of that? No, we don't. We haven't gone to many prisons. We've gone to one. Yeah. Um, I think because of the obvious, you're going to have you know dis disagreeable souls out there. They've been hung. They've. Um, but even in the country towns, uh, gibbeting was still very common um, to warn off other known criminals, or you know, it, it was a known thing to gibbet the prisoners there. So, you know, you've got the country area, especially, you know, the trees once hung someone for a period of time until times changed and they got them to cut down and give them a decent Christian burial. But, you know, like with hauntings, um, a lot of the time it's a residual thing. So if something traumatic has happened in an area, um, you're going to have a stamp imprint on that ground. It's almost like toxic soil afterwards, you know what I mean, where negativity yeah. breeds more negativity. And there's certain areas that I think is a no-go zone, especially if there's been a, a terrible murder that's happened. Um, I don't see any sort of fascination and seeing what's down there because you know what's down there. It's not going to be good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I see a lot of uh, ghost hunters, ghostbusters in Australia that I respect, and I think they're on top of their game like you two are. They do a lot of um, a lot of cemeteries. Mm -hmm. I want to. This is a two part question. I know you had a, you you have been to your fair share of cemeteries. What is the paranormal community like down there? I'll have you guys give me the the um, the Jason Ghost Hunter State of the Paranormal Union address in Australia. Tell us what that community is like, because I know, Julia, you had some issues with one of your cases at a cemetery where um, people some people lashed out at you a little bit for that. So what is the what is the state of the paranormal community there in Australia, in your opinion, and how uh, do people as a whole outside of that community uh, accept or not people such as yourselves that are really passionate about investigating the paranormal? Oh, I don't think um, Australia is open to spiritual 
um, the paranormal world as, say, the USA or the UK. Um, a lot of our abandoned places are condemned. Um, it, it can be a hefty fine if you're seen trespassing. And I think a lot of the reasons why paranormal teams such as ourselves, when we're running a YouTube channel, do cemeteries, it's more for the location purposes, you know, because um, a lot of haunted buildings aren't readily available or they're council owned and they don't allow paranormal investigators in. Like I said, they either don't believe in it or um, then they're not as of approving of what we do. I mean, a lot of people like ourselves will do more private homes, but then we're not going to put them on YouTube because that's confidential cases and we treat each and every one with respect. Um, and people are sort of, they're not open to asking for help unless they've heard you on radio like we've been or on something. They go, oh, actually, I do have something that's been bothering us for years. Could you help us? But they're not open to asking for it. It's not a thing, you know, that you feel comfortable about telling people and say, oh, I've got something in my home and I don't know what it is, you know, in the fear that they might be crazy or um, in the fear that, I don't know, that people won't believe them, pretty much like UFOs type sightings or, or Bigfoot that we have down here. Um, it, it Paranormal is pretty much regarded in the same way. So unless you're dedicated and you can take the knockers where you just go okay well we've seen enough to believe there's something out there um then yeah people don't tend to regard you in too high a ground if you know what i mean yeah, yeah here in the states we are in in my again in my humble opinion we're um we're just swamped with way too many paranormal shows TV shows. If there were just a few really good ones, I think it would be a lot better for our field than just to have just so many. Um, and the you know, so many of them are the same, or they're just not very good. And people get a little soured on our, that aren't in our community get a little soured towards the paranormal community. I occasionally will see a, a show pop up from the UK, but. Um, I can't remember. It's been many years since I've seen a show out of Australia. Do you guys have paranormal shows out there? And if so, what do you think of them and do you like them? I think Alan Tiller was the last one that we had that came famous down here and that was um, Haunted Australia and that was back in the early 2000s. Yeah. Um, that, that was the last show that we watched that came from Australia. Wow. It's not many down here. We have a question from Anthony Lewis for you. When demons hide itself as child spirit, how can you tell different between child spirit and demon dress up as a child? I'm going to throw that at you guys, and then I have a follow-up question to that for you, Julia, because I'm going to try my best not to embarrass you or put you on the spot. And if I ever no. ask you, if I ask you either one of you anything that you don't want to talk about, <laughs> you just say, Sean, I'd rather move on off that topic. And you know me, I will. But something happened before the show today. Somebody reached out to me for help. And it's very similar to a situation that you just went through. And we talked about it a little bit before the show started. I'll ask you that on the tail end of this. But do you guys have any... Um, Anything, uh, any feelings about that question? Look, I'm suspicious about any child ghost because um, my personal belief, children of, are made of the light and they tend to go straight to God. So I, I do know people believe in children ghosts and they do exist, but whenever a, a ghost or some spirit entity comes towards and says, I'm just an innocent little child, straight away my suspicions up especially if it'll say things like will you be my friend or can i come with you those kind of things straight away i'm like paranoid thinking uh this could be something i will 
disguised in sheep's clothing here, but in saying that I tend to treat all spirits in the same way. Um, we say a prayer before we start. We are, ask for Archangel Michael and Jesus to watch over us, that things don't attach to our equipment or ourselves. And then we also do a prayer when we finish thanking the angels and Jesus for looking after us, keeping us safe because we do tend to take it seriously. And we were recently in an area where there was children buried and we did have some devices lit up. Now, I can't tell you for sure or not whether it was a child. It seemed childlike, if you like, but um, I tend to treat them all with a little bit of suspicion because you never really know what you're talking to. Well said, well said. And, and my two cents on that would be uh, I usually, they can only trick you for so long before they have to show you, you know, yes. their true their true nature. And, um, but yeah, uh, it's a red flag, always throws a red flag up to me when, when I am encountering what I think to be or, or what's presenting itself to me as a human spirit. Uh, Anthony's got a backup one here. Jason and Julia, was there one case you on that you never forgot about? One case that you went on that you guys have never forgot about, like the Jason ghost hunter, Julia and Jason King case that really put you guys on the map. I think there was one. I obviously can't say names next. It's all confidential. But this person was, um, her face was changing and she was talking in Latin and things like that. So we were pretty freaked out. Well, not freaked out, but we were pretty prepared for the worst when we came in to that home. Um, we also had a couple of people that were demonologists here in Australia help us and come on FaceTime. So we had their support as well and they also gave us tips what to do because we don't call ourselves professionals in anything, um, just basically God's servants. And um, when we got there, like we, you know, sussed out the situation a bit she was the, the the person that we were investigating a house was acting like she was possessed from something but it turned out a sadder story where she was actually possessed by a lower entity that she knew that venged revenge on her when that person died and that person did come back and get revenge so um that was probably a case that kind of threw us a little bit because, you know, you go to places and we think, oh, we get told that there's something going on and probably seven out of ten times it's not evil, if you would like to say, you know. It's just that the people are so frightened, then, you know, they're glad to see it go and once you bless the house they, they tend to move on. Um, but this one was probably the one that was evil, but we had to work out, was it really, um, you know, demonic or was it what kind of, what what's going on here? So it threw us a little bit. It was, it was a bit of a sad story, but it worked out well in the end. That's all I can say. Good um, for you. I mean, out here we have clergy that won't help with cases, paranormal cases. And I get it and I understand. So that can be tough for anybody to, to find uh, paranormal clergy to help them with, with, with a malevolent type haunt. Do you, is it like that out there too? Or do you have to pretty much reach out to yeah. like you independent to... demonologists? Yeah. Sorry. It was a delay. I didn't mean to. Buddy. That's okay. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Look, a lot of the, well, they think anything paranormal is bad for you, so they tend to think what we do even isn't a good thing. And um, But then you've got the ones that are believers. They kind of get you to do the dirty work first. They want you to prove to them that it's a, a decent case and have the evidence backed up. And I'm not talking about one visit. I'm talking about several over a period of months and um, before they'll step in you know so the teens that we know that are 
like that work in that area, demonologists, because we don't really, we just do house blessings and we investigate for them. But if we think it's something more sinister, we'll, we'll call on their help because they do it all the time. Yeah. Um, they've told us stories that, you know, they're always risking themselves when they go into places like that. And there's been cases where there's been true possessions and it's been over years, not months, of getting that person healed. And the church has basically stepped in a couple of years later wow. um, before they'll act that they're convinced that there's a true thing going on. Well, we have another question for you from Linda Judd. Hi, Linda. Having a conversation with a ghost is a delicate matter. Have you had a memorable conversation with a ghost? That's a good I have my brother. Yeah, that has to be my brother who's passed on. He's the most cheekiest guy I think I could ever know. My wife knows too now. Um, he's around me all the time. He's guiding me through the industry, what I do for so long. And he gives me a lot of heads up. What's the we, we might be on site somewhere and if, if there's something negative or something really is in the area, he would go, hey, bro, heads up, it's coming this way. Or he'll say something smart to me to let me know if it's safe or non-safe or gives me a lot of eyesight on the other side to where he gives me that information. So, yeah, it would have to be my brother that really, you know, for ghost side of it, he's really the one that gives me the one around and gives me more headaches than you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. And it's, it's, you guys must have had a, quite the bond in life and yeah. that carry, carries on. Uh, and he's waiting for you, man. You, oh, you yeah. got, um, he's got plans for you when you get up there. And, oh, uh, hopefully it's all good. <laughs> There's a lot of um, holding something in my hand, you know what I mean? Like, look, that's what I owe him, you know what I mean? Like, we've got to have a, a good time of talking face-to-face -face that way. Well, here comes the I, – I have to bring this up. I'll tell you why, Julia, and you'll totally get this. Not only did we have a question here, uh, somebody – feeling gifted uh, and not knowing what to do about it. Somebody wanting to pray, but not knowing how. And I was just reached out to today by somebody, and I get this all the time, people who are having issues with their children. And it's very, it's a, it's a touchy subject because like you don't have to, I get on people all the time for, for saying, it's okay if you don't believe in God. But be careful what you say and throw out into the cosmos. And for an example, if you hear someone say, I'd rather rule in hell than serve in heaven, don't say that. Don't throw that yeah. out into the cosmos because you don't know what's listening and what's going to take that as an invitation to say, mm -hmm. okay, fine, here you go. Um, many children, no fault of their own, get attachments. They didn't do anything. They didn't do seances. They're not ghostbusters. They're not um, devil worshipers. But they're easy targets, especially if they don't have um, a religious belief system in place. So it's no fault mm -hmm. of their own, but they get an attachment. Then the parents don't know what to do. And I just had someone reach out to me with a case like that. And you, too, after we had first met, you had had some issues with your daughter. Mm -hmm. So if this person happens to be watching the show, and they could be, um, what advice do you have for parents who feel that perhaps their child may have an attachment? Okay. Well, with the experience I had, um, my child wasn't open to suggestion there might be something around her. Um, so what I did, I prayed for her for in, in her absence. Um, I also cleansed, I put cleansing in her room, I blessed it if you like. Um, I also had my um, friends say prayers for her. And the one thing I do know, I'm not, like I said, I'm not a professional like yourself. Um, but the one thing I do know about negative energy, they feed on fear and starve on faith. 
So whatever it is that they believe in their higher, um, you know, force, God, creator, if they say enough prayers and have faith that they're going to get heard and their children will be saved, they will be guided in a way that that will happen. You know, you just have to keep believing because the one thing that they always pray on is your fear. Your fear is what will block you. And it's only a normal thing as a parent to be afraid for your children or afraid for somebody. So once you start feeling helpless, they've got you. So you have to be strong and you have to believe that, you know, God's going to pave the way. Like I said, I was led to you and I was led to other people that I knew that dealt with these kind of entities that I could ask for help. And together as a union, we all prayed for that my child and and she's a lot better now god bless uh, i'm i'm so happy to hear that that made my night and i feel bad for some of these parents that call me because you can't cram religion down a child's throat uh if they're not receptive to that even though they may have other issues going on all you can do is is the best you can do which is pray for them and and eventually with with god's help they will come around but it can be a tough situation anthony's back hi anthony question is there is there a case that you would not mind going back to revisit a lot of cases i work i don't you know i'm hoping this situation is i brought closure to it what was tormenting this family has moved on and i don't want to have to go back and help this family again so what do you say is there any one any one of those cases that I wouldn't would. go back to. Oh no, that you would go back to. Oh, um, or not, not I'm mind not, going back to, or and if you want to throw in one that you wouldn't, that'd be fine too. Um, look, I never say no to people if they want genuine help. We're there for them. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we've got many different stories. I mean, I think the one that was the most heartfelt was we had a whole family sleeping downstairs too scared to go upstairs in their house so we're terrified of what was up there so you can imagine you know a family of four children all sleeping in the lounge room downstairs so i was scared and um it turned out to be quite innocent actually the spirit was actually just a lost soul and could be moved over quite quickly so you know to see them crying tears of relief afterwards and looking around the house and it's hard to describe, but when you've blessed a house and you know God's lights in there, it smells different, it looks different, it feels different. And that was the first thing the wife noticed. She goes, I've never smelt lemons before in my bathroom. Now I can smell my lemons, you know, like, um, and the kids were playing in their room and they're like, we're not scared to go to bed now. And it's just such a good feeling, you know. So, of course, yes, I do it ten times over to have that relief for them because no one should be afraid in their own home. Absolutely. Uh, any cases you wouldn't revisit? <laughs> wouldn't we visit? Oh, not many places I wouldn't. <laughs> no, no um, not really. No, we might get spooked the first time, but we might go to a site. We might get spooked a little bit, but then we quickly pull ourselves together. Like we're human, we, we jump out of our skin and then we have to quickly jump back in our skin and go, well, that was fun. My heart's just come back to normal. And then <laughs> we've got to quickly program yeah. our minds to. I'm why, guilty of it too. I, yeah, it's happened why? To me. What happened? Why did it happen? And then we start thinking, you know, backtrack ourselves to be able to walk back into it. So, like, some days we will get that feeling where we've got the all, all eyes on us and we know when we get out of that car, we can feel it. It's already there, it's waiting for me. But then, lucky my brother, he's up a van. He goes, I'll let you know you're going to get surrounded and stuff like that. So I'm already preparing for the worst. But there's not a case I would not go back to because they're, they're always different. Like you can't say one mm. spirit's the same as the, everyone else because they're not. They've all got their own way of presenting themselves, making you feel, and what they do is always different. So. Yeah, no, I'll go to anywhere, anytime. Um, if even if I jump out of my skin the first time, I'm going back for a second hit. It's like we're not a wallet coaster. You know, you're going up and down. <laughs> uh, 
Linda's back. Hi, Linda. That's hey. great, Jason, to have your brother's backup. I agree, Linda. That's great to have your brother's backup from the other side to cool you in on what's going on. Yeah, I, I love that story. That's, that's very, yeah, very um, cool. It, um, it can be a pain in the backside sometimes. And I like, I'll be going, okay, I'm going to go, oh, Julian might plan something for me to go somewhere haunted. And Julian goes, you, you won't know where we're going. Next minute, I'll start describing where we're going. She's going, tell your brother to zip it. But lately, <laughs> he's been a good boy. He's been able to plan things for me. And he hasn't said nothing. Normally, he used to do a lot of talking. But now he goes, I'm not telling you a word now. So I go, come on. He goes, no. Nah. And Julian's got that surprise for you. I'm not blowing it this time. Because he, he, does, he used to do that all the time with Julia. Well, how did you guys get it? Is this a lifelong passion for the two of you like first of all i love the fact that you're a couple um i you know I've, I've lost track of how many cases i've worked with my wife and if if it wasn't for my wife we would have never started ghost be gone and done the things that we did we used to have there was a couple of times where we had we had bigger teams but now after you know all of this time we realize that we're just better i'm better by myself when i go to certain cases and we're better together as a team when we go on cases and i don't have to worry about what may happen to uh other investigators on my team that i you know i don't need to worry about that i want to focus on the business at hand so how did you two is it like i said is this a lifelong passion for the two of you or uh did this did this come about just a few years ago um actually we met online only seven eight years ago and before that, I was um, active in the spiritualist churches here um, and I used to um, go ghost hunting, if you like. Um, and then Jason, his experience was he was always fascinated in, in the other side but didn't really have much dealings with it until his brother passed away. And he first saw his brother and he thought he was going nuts. Um, and his brother said, we've got work to do. And he didn't know what he was talking about. But then he had the gift where he could see and communicate with the other side. And in that time, his life's been a roller coaster of events. And, <laughs> and we met um, and we decided to do it together, you know. We both like to help people we come from different kinds of backgrounds. I've been psychic all my life, um, but I was Catholic growing up, so I always fought it a lot, um, thinking what I was doing was bad. So now, and, and I used to pray, look, God, if you think it's bad what I'm doing, take it away. Absolutely. And he never took it away. So I, I thought, well, he must want me to have it for some reason. And so now we use it to help others. So. I, I have a great deal of respect for truly gifted, psychically gifted people. Um, I enjoy, uh, if I truly believe someone is truly gifted and able to come work a case with me, they're invaluable. It's like another piece of equipment. Um, I enjoy it. Many teams won't investigate with a psychic. I think they're doing themselves a great disservice. Um, I, I really enjoy it. My wife is sensitive. Um, I've got a bit of it. I think that to work with a truly gifted psychic is, uh, if you can get one on your team, I I'm all for it. I think it's it it's almost, in my humble opinion, necessary. Linda says, hooray, God supported you. He, <laughs> he didn't take it away. That's another great story. I love that. Um, Anthony's from? back. What do you okay. feel is yeah, best? Anthony. What do you feel is best Ghostbusters tool in ghost hunting? That's a great question. And we're almost out of time. We may have to end on this one. Your best, tell you what, it's a two-parter. Your must-have piece of equipment and one that if you ever see one again, you're going to toss it in the trash. Empire cat balls. I'd probably say the cat ball for me. Yeah. This seems to be the most popular thing that they like to touch. Uh, REM pods, if they're in the mood, they will. Um, same with um, K2 meter. And um, you can only assume what's coming through the ghost box is real. Mm. So cat ball would probably be my favourite. Yeah, about the same. And the REM pods, you know, like some days they'll hit them and you're thinking, okay, well, 
you can let go of it now, you know, and they hang on the, the last couple of cases. They killed my battery in one of my REM pods because they hit it that hard. Um, they wouldn't stop playing until it was dead. Um, so, yeah, the cat balls and, you know, I'm, I like the neck of funny, but, you know, it's a, you've got to really work on that. So, yeah, the cat balls, yeah. And a camera. Yeah, you and don't camera. have to have lots of fancy gadgets. I mean, when we started, all we had was an old camera <laughs> and we walked around and you'd be surprised what comes up on film that you don't see with your naked eye. Absolutely. You know, so your sensors and the cameras are the best tools ever. Yep. Absolutely. I couldn't have said it better myself. Guys, I love you both. I respect you both. I'm so uh, honored to have you guys take an hour out of your busy Tuesday nice. lunch hour <laughs> to come and hang out with me. Did you guys have fun? Will you come back? Oh, we 100%. had a ball. Thank 100%. you so much right for on. asking. And, and thank you to everyone that's been listening. Absolutely. You guys have uh, the the happiest of New Year's. I will pray that all your wishes and dreams come true for the two of you this year. And uh, God bless you both. Have a great evening, and I'll be in touch. God bless. No worries. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. See you guys later. Bye-bye. Australia. Yeah, I can't remember the last time I was back there, other than the, the girl that I spoke to, the ghost hunter that I spoke to. Wonderful show tonight, Ref. Thank you, Linda. And nice meeting Jason and Julie from Australia. Yeah, they're, they're great. I knew, I knew you all would love them. And they'll be back, I promise. Sometime this summer, because I'm already booked to the end of July. Uh, April, I think, I'm already booked out till. So I will get them back this summer for sure. A couple of big announcements for the upcoming year. Two new series. Uh, I'll be here this coming Friday with the first new series, the first Friday of every month for the rest of this year will be Ira Wolfnesson. She's an angelologist and a demonologist, classical, who will come here the first Friday of every month and begin a series of monthly lectures on angels and demons. And that starts this coming Friday, the 6th. Um, the second Monday of every month, beginning next month in February, the one and only Dr. Joy Pugh will begin a series of monthly lectures on you name it. You know everything's in her wheelhouse. Uh, she's a minister, an author. Uh, I love her too. She's just great. You guys are going to love her. And I'm calling that the Joy to the World series. Uh, Dr. Pew gets her preach on once a month, starting next month, second Monday of every month. Of course, Susan Ahern is back for Happy Medium Mondays, the last Monday of every month, starting this month, and will continue on as long as I can keep her coming back every month for this year. So, what else do I want to tell you guys? Thank you all for being here. I don't have a show without each and every one of you tuning in. I want to thank my co-producers, Zach and Adrian Clayton. I couldn't do the show without them. Communitypayitforward.us. Communitypayitforward.us. Go there. Find somebody that needs some help, and if you can help them, help them. My church, the USOCC.org. Go there if you're interested in my church. Go to bishopjameslong.com if you'd like to attend night prayer which is Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific. The link is there. Or if you want to attend Bible study on Wednesday afternoons and Sunday afternoons at 5 p.m. Pacific, the link to that is there also. I want to thank Things Network. I want to thank Temple of Phoenix Rising Entertainment. I want to thank Skeleton Key Network. I want to thank PACT, Little P, capital A-C-T, podcasting, all coming together channel, for all of these networks simulcasting my show. God bless you all for that. And I truly do also pray and wish each and every one of you the happiest of New Year's and may all your dreams and wishes come true. And it is bad joke time. I'm going to pull a bad joke that one of you sent in out of this haunted carnival barker hat. And it's my poor attempt to try and put a smile on everybody's face before I say goodnight. <laughs> uh, 
What is the number one cause of divorce? Marriage. Good night, Danny. Good night, Jack. Good night, dog. Good night, Harold. Rest in peace. Good night, Ernie. Good night, Bill. Good night, Dan. I love you all. God bless you all. Peace.